Well, welcome to Hotel Tech Clinic, uh, the value of data in unprecedented times. Uh, in this session, we will discuss with five industry leaders in data and business intelligence, how data is helping hotels identify opportunities and risks in the challenging COVID-19 marketplace. I'm Ryan Haynes, and I'm gonna be your moderator today. This is a live Q&A with questions received in advance, but you're more than welcome to share any questions you have during the session in the com comment box throughout the session. During the next 40 to 45 minutes, we'll get to understand how you can utilize data, uh, use, utilize existing data and ensure you are responding to growth signals in the market to improve bookings, conversions and revenue. We will cover these four areas. Why are hotels that use data outperforming the market? What insights can create a competitive advantage? How to prepare your hotel for business intelligence? And what data will enable you to improve performance? Now is indeed the time to push the boundaries, identify new opportunities, put yourself out there and learn to be fearless, taking a dive into the deepest to really understand your business. There will be no better time than now and no other way to really own your business for the future. After this session, check out our new podcast series from travelmarket.life, Hotelier's Voice, especially the episode with Robert Marussi, the CCO at Turtle Bay Hotel, where he talks about the value of business intelligence that has provided him to identify his guest segment and segregate the data and pinpoint with greater accuracy the key audience for guest acquisition. Our speakers today include Mario Belinzona, the CCO of BD4 Travel, Nadine Betcher, the Senior Product Manager of OTA Insights, Stephen Burke, SVP Travel for Science, Apo Di, Di, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Di Dimertas, a CEO of Intelligent Hospitality, and Michael Grove, Managing Director of Hot Stats. First, let's hear from Michael McCartney, the Director of Prim Solutions. So um, tell us, Michael, what's the concept behind uh, Hotel Tech Clinic? Yeah, hi, Ryan, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Yeah, uh, Hotel Tech Clinic was started uh, to give hoteliers direct access to some of the leading vendors, uh, technology vendors in the hospitality space, so they can establish the, the value and the uh, benefits that these technologies can bring to the uh, hoteliers' establishments during these uh, challenging times. And unlike uh, traditional forums and webinars, we encourage self-promotion um, by these vendors because I believe that by asking difficult and challenging questions of the vendors, of these technology providers, hotels will actually be able to derive uh, more directly uh, and more specifically the value that these technologies will bring to the, their establishments. So I encourage everyone on the call to do just that and ask very pointed and specific questions to the vendors and get as much out of this call as they can. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. Well, let's go on to our quick fire two minute pitches. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's all they have is just 120 seconds to uh, present to us their business and where they sit within the data and business intelligence sphere. Starting off with Mario Bellinzona, the CCO of BD4 Travel. Mario oversees sales, marketing and all customer success activities within BD4 Travel. Prior, he was Director of International Operations at Sabre Hospitality and has worked with Nor One and Trust international as part of his career take it away please mario thank you very much ryan thanks for having me uh, and good afternoon to everyone bd for travel in a nutshell and the very angle we are occupying when we talk about data and, and mm -hmm. new data models it's about personalization it's about ai driven personalization for the travel and hospitality space it's about ensuring that every individual coming to your site is getting the most relevant most personal experience and with that improve that experience engagement and conversion we think, oh, click. We think that's exactly the right angle to occupy at this point in time because lots of other data elements dramatically lost value in this current situation which we are in. If you look at year over year pickup rate or pace or the market mix or occupancy, it's not giving you much of a benefit driving insights from that. Looking into the past is letting you down and looking to the future same way. Past, very much unreliable. Things that was important to a user in the past is maybe not what is important now. Think about how important a clean room is compared to maybe Wi-Fi or other activities. On the future, very much invisible, depends on what corridor <coughs> your government is opening at this point in time. 
It is all about looking at the present. It is looking at the very situation right now. It's looking at current behaviors and desires of your customers and how they engage with your property, with your brand and with hotels that are available. This is what we do for a living. We profile the users while they are on site. We look at their activities. We look at their interests, their intent. We determine their price sensitivity and what is the next best action that makes them click and go and interact with your product. If you profile the user, that allows you to also target these individuals and show the right content, the right images, the right product mix, room rate combinations, and the right auxiliaries and orchestrate that all that is the most optimal experience for that user. That's what we do. I'm very uh, interested to the session later today. Later on, have a look at our website at bdfortravel.com. We're very interested to um, specifically tackle the hospitality part of it. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you very much indeed, Mario. Next up is Nadine Betcher, the Senior Product Manager of OTA Insight, where she is responsible for the research and development of Market Insight. A revenue specialist at heart, Nadine initially pursued her career by working in a number of revenue management positions, including Starwood Hotels and Resorts, and served as revenue management lecturer at BBI Luxembourg and Brussels. Take it away, Nadine. Thanks, Ryan. So let me start with the obvious. Things have changed. Our markets are not what they used to be. And like we all know, they've been heavily disrupted by COVID-19. So where historically we were very concerned with growing our piece of the pie, which used to be our market share, we're actually now concerned with getting a slice of that pie at all, because that pie is just so small. So how can data help us in this situation? And what we believe is that if you want a piece of that pie, at OTA Insight, we think you have to come early to the party. And data can help you identify these early opportunities that still exist in the marketplace. And these opportunities show not when the user or the guest walks through your front door, but the moment he picks up his device, the moment he starts his search, when he shows his intent to come to your destination, what services he wants to use there, and that he is basically on his way. That's when you can still convert this guest before he even makes a booking. And of course, you don't do this alone. This upper funnel data, as we call it, is perfect to, to collaborate around with your commercial teams to indeed form this right offer for this customer at the right time. Because they usually tell you in these early demand signals what they're actually looking for. So it's a really guest-centric approach to building your offer and not an offer-centric approach like we used to do in revenue management. Also, let's keep in mind, there are not so many of these guests out there. So this hypothetical guest who else am I actually competing with for this type of customer? It is probably everyone else in the market at this point in time. So is it just the five competitors that you have always had on your list? Or is it really an extended set? And can this guest help us to form a more scientific and dynamic approach to forming our comp set? Because these are very dynamic times. So we believe we need very dynamic data as well to navigate through the crisis. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Nadine. Coming over to Stephen Burke, the SVP Travel at Science. With over 17 years experience in the sector, working across connectivity solutions, system development and data optimization, Stephen leads a dedicated travel and hospitality division at Science. His background includes senior and leadership roles in product development, working as part of the management team and as a member of a board of directors. Hi there, Stephen. Take it away. Hey, thanks a lot, Ryan. So thanks everybody for joining today. Thanks to all the uh, other speakers on the panel. Really excited about that. Um, got my little uh, clock set over here. So if I keep looking, I'm just timing myself. So what is Scient? Scient is a vertically focused IT services company. We formed it out of a recognition of the need that um, different companies at different times need additional people to come and help uh, different skill sets, uh, things like in systems integration or working on machine learning and AI projects or, or big data analytics, um, where you may need a little help now and then, but you need help from people that actually understand your business and understand your industry. And then you don't really have time to, to do a lot of knowledge transfer about you know, what's a hotel reservation or what is a revenue management system and why does it need to talk to a property management system? So that was the key idea behind Scient. Um, we're a team of, of industry experts. Mm -hmm. We have uh, industry consultants. We have uh, software developers, software engineers um, that work on problems that our, uh, our industry needs to tackle. So uh, in the systems integration world, we spend a lot of time looking at uh, 
how systems talk to each other and helping make those data connections, whether it's a property management system talking to a point of sale system or um, a CRM talking to a property management system we get those things done. We work in machine learning. Uh, profile merging is something that uh, still continues to plague uh, hotels uh, throughout uh, the world. Uh, and big data analytics, um, looking into logs and seeing what kind of data uh, we have in there. Um, and this is something that we would really like to, to help you work with. Thanks. Thank you very much indeed, Stephen. Over now to Apple Dimertas, the CEO of Intelligent Hospitality, whose experience spans over 30 years in leadership roles in revenue management, sales and marketing, distribution strategy and business intelligence. In his career, Apple was chief sales and marketing officer of Jeremiah Group based in Dubai and has worked with high profile international hotel companies, including Intercontinental Hotel Groups and Hilton Hotels Corporation. Take it away, Apple. Yeah, thanks, Ryan, and thanks, Michael, for organizing this, and thanks for uh, to all the attendees for attending this uh, panel. Uh, we found we founded our company back in 2011, and uh, we have presence uh, in 26 countries now. Uh, I think it's 28 now. Um, uh, now, we were founded out of a need, right? I uh, working at Hilton and IHG and later Jumeirah. I led the development of BI platforms in these organizations. So during my last time, last year with Jumeirah, I said to myself, that's enough uh, doing it uh, for three organizations and trying to change this landscape uh, at one organization at a time. And wanted to build a, a, a fourth iteration of what we did in the past and offer it to the industry at large with one goal and, it, and that is to change the industry uh, and to make it a more data driven insight centric uh, industry. Now with that goal, uh, we started developing Hotel IQ, which is now much more than a business intelligence platform. In addition to having data analytics within it, it's a predictive uh, function, it's predictive functionality, uh, powers up its forecasting and budgeting platform. At the same time, it is a master data management platform. Now. What we're doing, trying to do is really answer the problem that's on the screen today. Uh, now, analyses are time consuming. Extracting data out of different data sources are very, very time consuming, if not uh, impossible in some cases. It's very much uh, prone to uh, error because it's done manually by human beings. And data integrity challenges are everywhere. Uh, people do not work from the same set of data. And obviously, uh, lots of paper, right? And uh, I mean, even today, when you go to hotels, hotels keep printing uh, data, uh, paper to go into the meetings, whereas that should not be the case in the 21st century. Now, those are the problems that uh, we are uh, addressing and how we are solving those things and with interactive dashboards and uh, by, again, organizing and structuring the data across hotels and across systems. With our powerful predictive capability, we power up our forecasting and budgeting uh, platform, which uh, has put a stop to the manual forecasting and budgeting process that takes place in hotels. And obviously giving tremendous degree of uh, insight, uh, advanced metrics to help hotels and hotel companies strategize. Now, we're in, uh, in, a, in an unprecedented time. COVID-19 has uh, uh, turned life upside down as we know it, right? Um, all the things that we know, and Maria talked about the fact that past is not reliable, so true. Uh, hotels need data more than any other time in the past. Um, and if I can use an analogy, uh, it's a stormy night. I always use this analogy. It's a stormy night. You used to look at the stars if you were trying to find your way out. You cannot see those stars anymore, so you need strong GPS. And Hotel IQ, we believe, is that GPS for the hotel industry. That's all I got, Ryan. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Apo. And moving to Michael Grove, the Managing Director of Hotstats, uh, which collects monthly detailed financial data from over 6,000 hotels worldwide. Prior, prior to joining Hotstats, Michael held multiple operational and financial roles at hotel and corporate level over 16 years and is a regular guest lecturer at universities around the world. Over to you, Michael. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, uh, we at Hotstats, our focus is on collecting um, profit and loss data from hotels all around the world. 
Um, as you alluded to there, I came from hotel operations and finance with the, uh, the kind of frustration from the industry that we're very good at benchmarking rooms, revenue performance. Um, that's always been you know, very much a, a focus and therefore hotels are generally very good at that. Uh, hot stats fills the gap when it comes to um, looking at the rest of the PL, so understanding other revenue areas. Um, the 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 value of the um, the cost proposition for how you how you're dealing with your, your cost base versus your, um, your your competitors, and really putting a premium on GOP performance, so understanding how you perform versus your competitors. And of course, um, that is quite a large topic. And uh, working on a global level, we work with um, the large hotel chains from around the world to collect data. Um, Hotstats was only uh, born in 2014. Prior to that, it was a, a data arm of a consultancy firm based in the UK. We're now very much global. Um, we've now opened offices around the world um, and have ventured into those markets now um, uh, providing uh, detailed uh, financial data, collecting it through automatic form through uh, API links and through um, partners such as, uh, such as my, my colleagues here today on the, on the call. Um, and we're now collecting trial balance level data in order to be able to ensure comparability because of course, the fundamental of what we do is making sure that we're able to provide um, integrity and comparability in the data. Um, uh, in, as an output, we provide benchmarking and uh, market insight for consultants, developers, funds, et cetera, around the world. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Michael, uh, for that presentation and to the others as well. OK, so Hotel Tech Clinic, um, the value of data in unprecedented times. Now we're going to move on to a Q&A of questions that we have received in advance. But you're more than welcome to submit your questions during this session through the chat function. Um, should you have a BI or data story, please do let us know and we'll bring you on towards the end so we can discuss that further. In about half an hour time, uh, we will be moving into a series of breakout networking sessions to allow you to meet with some of the other, meet with the panelists, as well as speak with some of the other attendees on this call. So we really do hope you can hang around for, for some of those. My job now, Ryan Haynes, your moderator, is to try to tie together this conversation and uh, get the insights from our five specialists here. So um, the, the world of data, business intelligence, uh, I mean, it's, it's really accelerated in the last few years. So uh, we've uh, seen the UK's culture secretary recently talk about data and, and the value of that and, 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 it, and it being the new oil. Now, Mario, um, you've worked in, in the hospitality industry um, prior to joining BD4 Travel and BD4 Travel works with a lot of online travel agents. Um, so from your perspective now, what's the state of data analytics within the hotel? Hotel industry, perhaps in comparison or within uh, uh, in comparison to other sectors. Oh, loaded question. Um, you said data is is the new oil, and so what happens if the the value of oil goes down when the when the when demand is down, demand for oil is down? What, what's happening with data? If you had asked me the question on 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 data analytics, maybe in January this year, I would have thought that. Um, the hospitality industry did a pretty amazing job actually recognizing, acknowledging, and appreciating the value of data. There's so many revenue management systems out there, CRM components. It, it just is a concept that is embraced to, to work with data, to, to draw conclusions, to deduct uh, from what you have learned into, into um, new chapters. Uh, so pretty optimistic. Um, if, if you ask me right now, what I'm sensing is, uh, is a loss, is a loss of orientation. This, this, this data analytics that you may have seen um, being prevalent before is all about also looking at historic data or at least comparing it with historic data. And that, as a few in this panel already mentioned, is, is somewhat out of the window. If, if you're in a poor situation to, to prepare a forecast, um, how would you drive conclusions from looking at a year over year comparison on your booking pace or on your rev power or occupancy rate? It's, um, it's really hard. And at the same time, you also don't want to find yourself maybe in November next year, November 21, looking back into November 20. And again, ask yourself, how much advice can historic data give me? How much advice can data and, and analytics give me that is based on historic information? So what I'm sensing really is, is a loss of orientation. And maybe this panel can, can actually help uh, shed some light on a few areas that, that help adding additional perspectives on, on what to use in order to draw conclusions. 
I mean, Apo, we come to you. I mean, well, I've heard you say that hotels are data rich, but information poor. I mean, you've held numerous roles across large organizations, as well as developing this uh, hotel IQ product. What, what do you mean by this exactly? Sure. Um, and thanks for the question, Ryan. Yes, I say this all the time. Uh, hotel industry is data rich, but information poor. Um, well, here's what I mean by that. The industry has tons of data, right? Hotels and hotel companies have tons of data in their underlying databases. And, um, but ho- for some reason, hotel hoteliers have not necessarily figured out how to extract all that data out of the source systems and, and put it through a process which uh, lets, you, lets the data talk to you in a lagging and leading fashion, right? So what, what, what do I mean by extracting? E- extracting the data from where it is. That's not an easy task, right? Um, but once you've done that, then data is nothing in, its, in and of itself. It's a whole bunch of ones and zeros. It's all, it only means something to you if you put it through a, an analytical process. So then it speaks to you, as I said, in a leading and lagging fashion. Now, hotel industry has not been able to figure that one either. We've been, again, I said this before, I'm going to say it again. Uh, Microsoft introduced Excel in 1985, and we're working as if still it is 1985 in the hotel industry. It's not. It's, it's the 21st century. And yet, when, when you go to a hotel, more often than not, everybody is drowning in the sea of Excel spreadsheets, and that's not acceptable. So now... Uh, they are, yes, they are data rich, but information poor. That's what I mean. And there are many reasons as to why it is the way it is. But the prime reason for that is, uh, is, is not necessarily having that data-driven and analytics-driven culture within hotel organizations. Hotel companies do a great job at the macro level, at a uh, company-wide level, but when it comes down to the unit level, the hotel level, hotels, most hotels are still uh, drowning in the sea of Excel spreadsheets. That's what I mean, right? Yeah, and and it's all that time that's been spent as well on actually compiling, consolidating these reports, crunching all those numbers uh, before you can get to the point of being able to see what the market looks like and what the state of the hotel is. And Nadine, um, I mean, you you work with a lot of hotels. Um, What are the biggest data related struggles that you've seen your customers go through, particularly as a result of the crisis right now? Yeah, so what struggle have we not gone through in the last couple of months? I, I actually like to think, I just, it just came to me now while Apo was talking, I think this, this struggle has had many layers, actually. So when COVID first hit, was it in February, March? So when the first markets really closed, my key event that I still remember was ITB Berlin, I think one of the first events that really got cancelled. I think we were all in a shock state. And the big question out there was, what is happening? That was the one question. And we had very little information about this because traditionally what we see is obviously what we have on the books. We might see our cancellations pour in, but where's the bottom of this? And is this only us? Is this happening somewhere else in the market? What, what is going on with hotels closing? That was, I would say, the next phase when we saw during different lockdowns, hotels actually shutting their doors. Never before have we had so many requests at OTA Insight for the simple for a simple extract of how many hotels are selling like open in my city and is that changing yes or no? So that has never been looked at before. And I think then we came to a point where, well, we kind of came to the conclusion that markets are just what they are right now, and we have to start looking ahead. So we have to resume operations potentially with our downsized teams and there what Mario said applies very much what is my reference where can this journey go knowing that we're so dependent also on government restrictions and what data can I even look at right now to help me make decisions so one thing is of course to know what you have on the books that will never be irrelevant because I need to know if I can pay my my employees um, bills for instance but how can I still spot opportunities in a market that I don't recognize anymore? Especially in revenue management, where we're such experts, we're really good at our markets huh? as revenue managers. And that's being taken away from us. And I think that has been one of the biggest struggles we've seen. And it's become much more now, much more real time. What's happening in this 
uh, immediate moment in time rather than what's happening in a few months time or, or what's necessarily happened over the last week. Um, as we've seen um, with a lot of cases, uh, red lists, air bridges, um, cancellations, um, local lockdowns are all affecting, as you say, Nadine, uh, the, the op opportunity for hotels to operate or even open uh, and be available. Um, Stephen, uh, when it comes to uh, data integration, what sort of business cases are really driving that within the hospitality sector today? Well, it's a really good question, Ryan. You know, before um, Nadine just used the ITB uh, demar line of demarcation, which is a really good one because it's like before ITB and, and, and after ITB is sort of aligned with before and after COVID uh, for us. And before ITB, we saw you know, a lot of the normal integrations. So we do tons of different integration use cases. So there was a lot of distribution uh, integrations, a lot of RMS PMS. There's a lot of interesting things coming out in the in the data analytics in the RMS world. So so that all that was pretty strong. Then all that blew up, and everybody started uh, reacting to the situation. Right. So contactless guest journeys. Uh, are, are really important now. There's a ton of companies that are working on that. And when I talk about contactless guest journeys, you I mean you have to have property management system integration. You have to have um, some uh, door locking system integration if you want to be able to use your mobile phone as a, as a room key. Uh, usually there's some payment because people need to, to, to pay but not get within three meters of somebody else. Uh, so there's a lot of that. Um, there's been a reaction in the housekeeping market, understandably. And so the housekeeping systems are, are, are doing new things. Um, and you've seen a big explosion of housekeeping uh, being more attuned to the needs of the, the travelers in terms of like sanitization levels and things like that. Um, there was this, uh, this big uh, hackathon that happened in, uh, I think it was the May or, or the June timeframe. My, Michael, when was that, that big hackathon? Um, the, it was in May, yeah, I believe in May. It was in May? Okay, Travel they, Scrum. Uh, it's Travel Scrum, exactly. And they had a, some fantastic ideas that came out of that. They basically got people together and said, you know, why don't you, here's a bunch of APIs, you can hack um, anything that you want and bring something to the industry. And, and there were some really cool things that they did there about, you know, basically COVID hotspots within in the hotel and so on. And also COVID hotspots uh, from a, a travel destination point of view. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, indeed. I mean, certainly I, we've been speaking to hoteliers as part of uh, Travel Market Live's Hoteliers Voice series, which we've just launched. And contactless engagement um, is, is certainly one of the big drivers. And as you say, every single one of those hoteliers talk about the importance of having those integrations to be able to access and share the most relevant data. So if you, any of you have chance uh, listing out there, can check out those podcasts, you'll get some insights uh, from hotels of how they've been able to achieve that. Um, over to Michael. And now, profit and loss data. Um, how can it be used within business intelligence alongside guest data and other types of data used, utilized by hoteliers to, to see through um, perhaps the, the, the misty windows that we've got right now? Well, in context of the market, it's, it's kind of like we've, we've all said millions of times now, it's the unprecedented times. We don't really, you know, the whichever analogy you use, whether it's riding the, riding the ship through the stormy seas or like I used last week, the driving a car with no lights on. It's, um, it, it is, it, it, it's vital in understanding how you're performing right now because we don't have a budget to appear against. Budget's pretty much out the window. Last year is no longer the go-to reference point um, to even start your budget. Um, and even in normal times, I'd argue that, you know, you know, budgets are generally set um, around, you know, eight months of the prior year, and then you forecast the rest and then build your budget off, and a lot changes in that time. So up-to-date, you know, understanding of, of how your profession really is a, a, a decent bit of context to understand the output. Now, correlating that with other types of intelligence um, is something that I've been quite passionate about as well um, when, uh, since joining Hot Stats, I presented to the Asset Management Community last year. Um, with regards to how you can pull in um, understanding of spend. So if you're going into a conversation and it's very opinionated on, you know, are you overspending in sales and marketing, for instance, or overspending in marketing um, as, as one direct accusation you might get in, a, in an owner's meeting, for instance. Um, and you're able to correlate that with the output of performance versus your competition um, using the likes of, uh, of OTA Insight or, you know, um, the, the, the forward-looking um, booking channels, the you know comparables about your online performance versus uh, you know di direct to your your brand website or 
through um, through a third party, you can really understand how much you're spending versus your competition versus the output versus your competition. So it's actually a you know it, it's the central point I believe of all of the other kind of good things you're doing and the the good parts of your strategy. The PNL will always it'll always come back to profit and benchmarking your profit and understanding the output versus your competitors is 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 obviously the the kind of final point and the starting point I think for those discussions. Yeah, um, I, I guess as you say, um, the budgets are out the window, um, so you've got to look at uh, what you are actually producing. Uh, Nadine, with market conditions as they are, um, any other types of data sources hotels should be looking at uh, to identify opportunities in the marketplace? Yeah, definitely. So we really believe that this might be a good moment to reconsider indeed what type of data you use for what in the hotel space, because all data is only useful if you use it to drive a certain type of outcome, which is used by, by the teams. And what we find, at least what we see our users do, is that probably for the first time, this upper funnel data sources really seem to have a place in hotels. I don't want to argue that they never had, but it was always very difficult to access. And it was probably also the case that if you are operating in a very static market, like again, you know your market, things re return, you see what's happening year over year, maybe we were never really feeling this urgency to try something new. So to push the boundaries, like you said in the very beginning. So from our point of view, this is really the moment to look at what the guest is looking at right now. So what is the demand, if you can even call it that, but what are the travelers which are left who want to travel to your destination? And what can I do to convert these travelers? And that is really, it sounds quite simple, but it's a fundamentally different approach to what we're used to in revenue management. And I say that because again, just by knowing how many people are searching from any different region, that won't probably bring you these guests straight to your hotel. You will have to take action, most likely together with other departments. So we're calling for a much more proactive approach if we want to use of these, make use of these data sources as well. I mean, this has been an, in, uh, an issue with the in industry for as long as I've been in it, about 15 years, all the departments pretty much working in silos or having their own uh, intelligence and data for which they use for sales or marketing or revenue management campaigns. And, and you know, this, this ongoing um, sort of move and cultural change to, to aligning um, all these departments and, and getting them to work together. Um, these data-driven insights, APO, um, I mean, how is that, uh, how are they able to support um, um, teams uh, working to collaborate actually together to, for the success of the hotel. Sure, uh, one of the one of the main benefits of a BI business intelligence software and platform is they have everybody work under the same uh, umbrella, right? They have everybody work off of the same set of data. Uh, while sales might be looking at it from a different angle. And then, then, then marketing or then revenue management, but everybody's working off of the same set of data. So there are no silos, right? Uh, the, the business intelligence environment creates a unity, cultural uh, and, 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 and analytical unity within a hotel organization. Now, um, you know, I have worked at Hilton, I have worked at IHG, I have worked at Jumeirah. Uh, the fact that the hotels in, in, in most cases really did not know the basic tenets of their business uh, was always uh, surprising to me. I remember when I joined Jumeirah Group as their chief uh, sales and marketing officer, the senior VP sales uh, working at the time uh, within the organization, I asked her one question. I said, what's the value of American Express to Jumeirah Group? She could not answer that for me. They had to go, and that was my second week on the job. They had to go to American Express and said, okay, well, what have you done for us in the last five years? Now, these things need, really need to stop within the hotel organization, right? Within hotel organizations. So um, the data-driven insight is, 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 is critically important anytime, not just today, because we have a pandemic. Pandemic has caused a low tide. All boats are down now. So every, pretty much everybody, well, everyone is in the same boat. But, but you need you need data-driven insight in good times and bad times, right? And, and now I, I'm going to go back to the same analogy: good times, clear skies, you can look at the stars to find your way. It's not going to be efficient. You'll get there, maybe you won't. But when you get there, it's going to be a bit late. Um, 
But now, now you don't even have the stars. What are you going to take a look, right? Let the data speak to you in a leading fashion and let, let it guide you through these treacherous waters right now, right? So we onboarded a, a, a hotel company called Nationwide Hotel Management Company with 124 hotels right before the pandemic. And we've seen the impact of a powerful BI platform on an organization and how it helps, in the case of Hotel IKEA now, how Hotel IKEA has helped this organization navigate through this water and have them outperform their competition. So data-driven insight is a must, not only for today, anytime. Thank so you very much. I, I don't want to isolate it to just today, Ryan, because we have the pandemic. It's anytime. No, absolutely. Um, and as you say, sort of like working from one source of truth from a data perspective allows everybody within the organization to see how their business as a whole is actually performing. And I guess, you know, if you're furloughing staff or having to reduce the number of staff, you might not have a number of people to actually um, crunch that data and, and take those different perspectives. So if you've got one um, data entry point, I guess, you, your, or platform, you're, you're able to see how business as a whole is performing. Um, but then as you say, it's, it's all about what's happening now. Now, Mario, um, BD4 Travel has been releasing on a, on a monthly basis um, intent and demand reports, uh, looking at um, particularly the, the the stage at which the buyers are uh, or travelers are in, in purchasing bookings. Um, it, now, it's also your, your campaign, Come Back Stronger, uh, talks about the difference between nowcasts and forecasts. Could you explain what you mean by that? Um. Yes, nowcast forecast. For, first of all, a very nice uh, marketing gimmick comparing the nowcast and the forecast. I couldn't help it. It just sounded so good back then. Um, foremost, it, it actually supports and acknowledges that it's so difficult to really create a proper forecast these days. Again, based on all the uh, topics we just discussed in this, uh, this panel already, it's so difficult to conclude uh, a good projection from, uh, from the past and historic data. But uh, to grab something up was that let the data speak to you uh, is a beautiful one. And also Nadine mentioned um, some very important signals you can capture early on uh, to draw conclusions from. There's actually a whole new set of data that can help you draw very important conclusions. When, when, when things went downhill uh, shortly after ITB got canceled, um, obviously we have tons of data in our system from all of our customers. It was in a scary way fascinating to see <clears throat> how much traffic declined overall um, and also how um, that user intent changed. As you said, Ryan, we are differentiating. We are very simple. We're differentiating in four phases when you think about the user journey. We differentiate at lookers, planners, bookers, and customers. This is how we are looking along the user journey. And at one point, there was hardly any traffic. When traffic came back, when markets were locked down, when only certain corridors were opening very gently, we had first lookers coming back. They were inspired. They, they wanted to see where can they get out. We had a massive amount of lookers early on, but they couldn't book anything. Early on though, we saw and noticed when, when things changed, when a certain destination was opening up, how the planning actually started, how users started interacting with the product, with those hotels and started comparing. And suddenly the attention was on signals you may have ignored. On, on a new price sensitivity, on, on new destinations your users were looking at, they haven't looked at before. Who would have thought that the top number one destination for Germans traveling is Bavaria and the Schwarzwald? It's, it's not Spain and Egypt, it's the bloody Schwarzwald. Nothing is wrong with the Schwarzwald, I love the Schwarzwald, but you early on saw what kind of destinations are suddenly trending up, what kind of travel um, periods are trending up way before a first booking was made and just listening in and observing this activity gave very early clues on, on even what source market to support and, um, and what, what product to feature and how to reach those very users which are now starting to engage with your product. So a fascinating time for us, which is when we started to make this information available to others. So again, a nowcast is, is acknowledging this actually very interesting value into looking what's happening on your site right now and acknowledges how difficult it is to do a proper forecast. But it's also about responding and reacting to that now cast, because if you leave it another week or two, that now cast is going to be well past cast. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely right. So be fast and, and not only listen to the signals, but have the capability of reacting in real time to every of these interactions and be able to present the right 
piece of content and the right piece of information. And that's not always offers. It's, it's really about having the right piece of interaction with a user to convert. I think also Nadine said that there is the pie about sharing that pie. If you have a user coming to your site, it's so precious having him on your website and starting to have him engaging with your product. You don't want to lose that individual. You need to convert and you need to take away everything that can risk that individual of leaving your site without having made a booking. So how can you remove the clutter and ensure the right piece of message, information, content, offer is presented when that individual needs it? And this goes, harks back to Nadine's point about looking further up the funnel, right, Nadine, about where are, where is the mentality, where's where's the position of the consumer today, and, and, and what are they considering maybe before they even come to your website, before they even started doing a search for specific destinations or specific product, um, and, and, and where, where, where would you look at uh, getting um, the, the, this data that actually looks higher up uh, in the funnel? Yeah, so it depends a little bit, but I think Mari already um, hit on a very good point there. If you ever have anyone on your website, obviously that person you really don't want to use no matter what. We are really at OD Insight, we're looking very much up the funnel. So we would really pick up the first travel intent as soon as that customer who then landed on that, that website already started to look, let's say, for transportation into the market. So for flights from... Barcelona to Hamburg, for instance. Then further down the funnel, what is this consumer doing? So maybe, unfortunately, he might not always be on my website, but he's on other sites. So he's on the OTAs, might be on the web, on the meta sites. If we were still not in COVID, he might be on a GDS as well, making a booking. So this is where we can already pick up these signals, even if the customer maybe doesn't make it to uh, to my website, which would obviously prefer. And it's really funny when Mario was talking, I was thinking myself about the trends that we have observed. It's very, very similar. So post ITB, you could almost like, also now when we looked at it again, by destination, you can almost look at what path that destination has taken throughout the crisis. So how many feeder markets were blocked off? What's this country in lockdown? And it had such a strong effect on the search behavior and indeed the intent of those travelers who, who are then again waking up and they want to search. And also what was exactly the same, we, we actually offered in the beginning made these insights available to our users and we offered additional breakdown because we really figured out that these, these travelers that come back are probably not the travelers anymore that the hotels are used to. And that's where the Schwarzwald comes into uh, consideration. Lovely place, by the way. Um, I guess all the Germans well have been there this summer. Um, and that is really the point where we need to understand who these new travelers are, because the old, old ones that we had pre-pandemic, like our sweet spots, the ones that knew that we knew would come to our hotel no matter what, they might not be able to come right now. So we have to look at who can come, who wants to come, and what do these people want. And if we are then a little bit proactive, we stand a good chance of at least converting a sustainable proportion of these travelers instead of yeah, sitting back and, and waiting for better times to come. And given the opportunity to diversify potentially um, the type of guests that you acquire, but maybe even allowing you to pivot your hotel, um, pivot the type of services and provisions that you have and the guest experience. Um, now, um, we have another 10 minutes of this conversation. If anybody in the audience uh, would like to ask a question, please feel free using the chat function, after which we'll move into a series of breakout rooms so you can have a more of a direct conversation with our panelists here. But one of the biggest issues is obviously budgets and investments. Um, you know, every industry is incredibly stressed right now, particularly hotels. Um, that makes approval for new spend incredibly difficult um, and, and potentially deferred. Um, but what it is... Um, the business case for investing in data-driven insights and you know how can they identify the potential or, or the ROI um, from for investing in these types um, of, of, of data systems uh, over to Michael please yeah I think that um, if you're talking from Hotstat's perspective for instance um, I as I alluded to earlier I think it's the starting point and the end point of the conversation so you know before you really want to uh, 
before you can really understand what position you're in from a budgeting point of view and how you um, what the output is going to look like you're going to need to to, to benchmark your PL and understand what your context looks like versus the competition so i think that's slightly different but i think on the on a data from a data perspective i think there's kind of two sides to it as apple mentioned there's a lot of data in hotels already um it can be used to drive efficiencies it can be used to drive um you know a, a top line performance or interaction with guests there's so many different areas of it um, that is already in the business so from a cost point of view it's actually quite cost light it's not that expensive it's just a case of pulling everything together and utilizing that data to, to drive better decisions which will ultimately either drive your revenue lines or will offset the cost um overall uh, anyway and it shouldn't take much to do that because like i said it's, it's quite cost light um i think from from an investment point of view um th there is there's, there's so much data, it's not just the data that's currently available, but there's more and more kind of data being um, coming from different angles, so whether it's the, the investors who are going to be looking at data and making decisions on, on your business from, from that perspective, owners obviously are going to be taking data and, and um, scrutinizing. So operators really need to be able to keep up with that and, and be able to continue to, to evolve from, a, um, from an internal point of view and use that data then to drive the correct conversations. I think if anything, it's pointing you in the right direction rather than going down rabbit holes in all sorts of different directions that you could be forced into by in desperation. You know, when you're really, really looking to try and find to, your, your revenue opportunities and your cost opportunities, um, you could end up going down the wrong road where using data to kind of drive, to, to put your strategy in the right place and monitor it with something that's factual and um, objective, I think is it really enables you to be able to, to measure those things. So. I think it's just a fundamental rather than an option um, in many ways. It's just to what extent you, you take it and, and how much it works for the type of business you're running. Here. And I guess you've also got to think about your team players. I mean, their, their mental health and well-being and the fact that they, they want a job and they want to make sure that the business succeeds and they're uh, meeting their commercial objectives and not spending all their time uh, trying to pull together complex reports and from, from maybe a data lake that might not be fully cleansed and might not have the right data points in for, in there for them to take advantage of. Yeah, um, I, think, I think it's so important to be able to pull the data together. I think that's the, the key really is being able to, there are so many of these uh, these areas of the business. You need to be able to put it together in a simple format that everybody can can speak to. Um, in a kind of scorecard system, I guess, as it, you know, as as we did before in Excel spreadsheets. Um, but uh, yeah, having it visible for everybody to be able to utilize. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, Stephen, um, when it comes to new cases for how being how uh, being data driven can help your hotel succeed in the in the down market, um, have you got any particular favourite use cases uh, that you've seen and 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 how that the the data has been applied? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I actually would have to say that my favorite use case is what Nadine and her team came up with at OTA Insight. They announced a couple of weeks ago this cancellation view. And what's kind of interesting to me personally about it is that, um, you know, before this, this whole thing happened, cancellation events used to be kind of localized, right? So a storm would crash into an airport and suddenly nobody could get in. And so you'd have cancellations in that local market and they, you know, it was kind of obvious uh, that there was going to be some impact because, you know, if a hurricane's hitting your city, you're, you're quite aware that it's happening at that moment. Um, but now what's, what's interesting is like, um, and I, I'm just finally managed to make it to our Sofia Bulgaria office where I am right now. I've been trying to reach here since June. Okay. So, Every possible thing has blocked me from getting to this office, including actually being detained and relieved of my documents on one trip and put on the next flight back to um, to, to the Schengen zone because uh, I, I was unaware that I couldn't get in because I had a U.S. passport, even though I had e-residency. So there's like all these different rules that change all the time, right? And they impact the particular market. Uh, being from the Czech Republic, you probably are aware or may, might be aware now that the Czech Republic is going through a bunch of COVID-related problems again. And um, so now we're going to be locked down more. So this impacts some hotelier somewhere, right? And they don't have time to figure out like, you know, what's going on in the Czech Republic. Cause I got three guys coming from there. There's two ladies coming from France, you know, what's happening with these different lockdown rules and these data, uh, insights that are coming from, for example, OTA insights cancellation uh, uh, view and, and stuff like that are going to help hoteliers 
be more aware of very distant events that are occurring in real time that are necessarily going to impact their business. So, yeah, and as you say, things are changing so quickly at the moment, and uh, we don't know, you know, if somewhere's in a lockdown or if a country's been thrown on the red list, um, and each market is, and every country is behaving very differently to one another. Um, moving to Mario, um, your company, BD4 Travel, delivers intelligent personalization for travel. Can you explain what this is and hotel, how hotels can utilize it? Sure. Um, personalization, <clears throat> I think that term alone is, is used so, uh, so strongly in, in the past years. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a big topic everywhere. And if you think about the hotel product, that by itself is a very personal, very individual, uh, very emotional uh, product. Um, so a lot when you, when you talk about personalization is about personalizing your stay, upsell offers, additional packages, changing your room climate with an app, changing the lightning really customizing your stay as much as you can. Ultra personalization is the term used. And, uh, and that is a big thing. But uh, uh, some of you that people forget is not always about that very experience at property. It's, it's also that shopping process itself should be, should be personalized and should consider uh, making that experience <laughs> personal, individual, and relevant. At Beautiful Travel, we also talk a lot about digital empathy. And that's... Uh, that's understanding where is this, this potential guest coming from. And I don't mean uh, region or, or, or source market. It's, it's also what kind of mindset do they have? Are there, again, in their booking fund, are they now in inspiration mode? Are they looking? Are they comparing? Are they now planning, hunting down to one of your properties or one of your room rate combinations? Is this a price sensitive user? Is this a concerned user on COVID? you would show different things to that individual and maybe adjust that shopping experience and website experience than somebody who clearly is not. To give an example, when I was shopping around for an autumn holiday, spoiler alert, I didn't go anywhere. In the beginning, I tried to find a good destination. I found hotels and, and it was not easy because there were so many restrictions where I could go. At the point I found a property, I couldn't go anymore because my, my source market was proclaimed to be a uh, a dangerous zone, so they would not accept me anymore. They would refuse the business coming from me because I'm living in a dangerous city. So I didn't travel anywhere. But when I was browsing around and looking at properties, I was bombarded with special offers and discounts and day five and pay three. And that was useless for me. I would have paid the full price. I so desperately needed some time out, not in my same apartment. I wanted to be out. So it was wrong to show me that. And Lots of activities should have documented that to, to that hotel. I still got bombarded with offers. And also I got lots of COVID-19 messages, lots of don't worry here, don't worry there. I didn't worry. I know exactly what to expect there. So how can I be smarter about what this user is all about, what to present, what to do at what point in time? And that's what I mean with make personalization intelligent, uh, use digital empathy, uh, to ensure that experience in that moment is as relevant as individual as possible. Also, don't always look at segments. Segments are great, but we really do is looking at each individual. Every individual has their own package of needs and desires and special conditions, and that's what we want to cater for. And we've certainly seen over the last 10 years, you know, this, this move to globalization and you're, you know, it's, uh, providing everything to everyone. And at uh, right this moment in time, we've moved uh, very quickly to hyper local localization. And as you say, that the need to personalize that and, and how do you present those offerings straight up without the user having to search, search, search to find exactly what they want, but also most more importantly, what's available um, based on the situation that we're in at the moment. Um, and that, I guess, is you know, what is business intelligence or APO? What is not business intelligence? Uh, sure, Ryan. Um, business intelligence is, is dynamic. It's fluid. It's multidimensional. Uh, business intelligence is not reporting. Now, in our own space, in hotel business, business intelligence is the marriage between the art of running hotels and science of running business, right? So that's business intelligence. Now, technology is, is, is not a solution in, in, in this equation. It's the single most important enabler, right? 
Um, now, uh, when a, a lot of people and a lot of companies refer to business intelligence as, as, as reports and reporting, it, it's not. The, the word report has a static connotation to it. Now, Stephen talked about cancellations. Well, we did that, uh, we did that right as soon as uh, the pandemic started back in March. Now, understanding cancellations just flat out straight is not good enough, right? Understanding the net impact of those, of those cancellations and, how, and the speed at which they're canceling. We have a metric uh, that is uh, created by us internally that looks at the speed at which things are progressing, right? Understanding is so important. We have uh, hotels using Hotel IQ in, in, uh, in, in China. And we saw the speed at which uh, cancellations took place in China back in March, which gave us uh, red flags over here. And, and those are the kind of things that actually give us the, uh, again, proactive and, and indicative signs of what's uh, just about to come. So that's what business intelligence is. And business intelligence is also going down to the most granular level right? And giving the hoteliers the information they need at the most granular level, not some pie in the sky, castle in the sky, but actually uh, giving them insights that are actionable by them, right? Uh, that's how we define business intelligence on our side, uh, Ryan. Thank you very much. And when it comes to preparing a hotel um, for business intelligence and coming out stronger, and Nadine, what sort of advice do you give to hoteliers uh, preparing their teams and, and the culture for that change? First of all, I think they will have probably a lot to prepare. Um, I think what we've also heard over the last hour or so is that hotels often, even in bigger chains, but definitely at the individual unit, so often don't have a very data or business intelligence centric culture due to several reasons. So if we want to be ready and come stronger on the other side, actually we probably have to take a step back and really look at how do we want to operate as a team? What is our goal here? And I'm starting very simple. What are the KPIs? And I think Michael will recognize this discussion. What are the KPIs we actually want to chase as a team? Because we all know it's all about profit, but for the revenue manager, actually it's still about rev par. So it breaks down already at the goal setting. And that's how these silos could live on for so long because we all have very isolated goals and we have very isolated systems and we're still struggling to even pull what we have internally together. And now we're in a situation where, well, we have an opportunity to rethink and some of our teams might even be downsized due to what has happened. So that is something that will force us even more to rethink because we'll be doing different, um, different things in our everyday lives. And that's probably the moment to say, what outcomes do we want to drive as a team? How does every individual contribute to this? And do we have the data and the tools to extract the insights we actually need, but in a, but synced. So, really in a coherent in a coherent process that we can all come out of this crisis and be in a strong position to leverage insights together and take informed decisions and it sounds it sounds simple but it is really overdue i mean these discussions have been going on for i think as long as i've been in revenue management leave alone tech so we keep on talking about it, yet no one has really done it well. So let's maybe make this the moment to, to shine. 2020 can be the, the moment of change. Indeed. So we hope it will be, Nadine, and uh, moving into 2021. And I think that this is an opportunity now um, for us all to have a conversation in breakout rooms uh, for the people that are, are here to perhaps explore, you know, how they can utilize data, um, what they've can't, what they've got from this discussion, and how they can make a data effective either within their organization um, or um, within the industry as a whole. Uh, well, guys, thank you ever so much uh, for joining us today um, for the Hotel Tech Clinic, The Value of Data in Unprecedented Times. Uh, we've been joined by Mario Belinzona, CCO of BD4 Travel, Nadine Betcher, the Senior Product Manager of OTA Insight, Stephen Burke, SVP Travel of Science, Apo De Murta, CEO of Intelligent Hospitality, and Michael Grove, Managing Director of Hotstats. And thanks as well to Michael McCartan, Director of Prim Solutions, for sponsoring this. You'll be able to get 
get a full recording on travelmarket.life through podcast and YouTube, of uh, which we'll share in an email with you after this session in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, thank you for joining. If you want to get in contact with any of us, um, uh, you can join us on LinkedIn, I imagine. Everyone of us are on LinkedIn, so feel free uh, to reach out to us. And to uh, all the panelists, I guess, thank you ever so much for your time today.